Conceived as a supersonic nuclear attack option, the British Aircraft Corporation TSR-2 bomber is regarded as the most remarkable military aircraft never to be flown. Test pilots reported that it had excellent flying qualities, and the Royal Air Force assessment said it could accomplish every mission objective. A year later, nevertheless, the program was shelved owing to conspiracies, and all of the functional prototypes were destroyed. In the annals of military aviation, the TSR-2 is still a noteworthy achievement. NATO high-altitude aircraft were exposed when the USSR deployed surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s. An operational danger to the United Kingdom was posed in 1959 when the Taiwanese English Electric Canberra plane was shot down by the S-75 Davina Sam. English Electric and the Ministry of Supply worked together in 1955 to establish specifications for a new aircraft that would take the place of the Canberra. Under General Operational Requirements 339, a list of requirements was provided to a number of aircraft manufacturers in 1957. In order to deliver nuclear or conventional bombs, fly at low and high altitudes, and perform short or vertical takeoff and landings, the British wanted an all-weather, supersonic long-range aircraft. In addition, they want Mach 2 or faster since they believed runways and air bases would be necessary for impending conflicts. Aircraft must be able to take off and land on uneven fields or open spaces. Bids were due by January 31, 1958. A dispute in the political and public domains was triggered by Defense Minister Duncan Sandy's 1957 Defense White Paper, which asserted that ballistic missiles will replace manned combat as the principal weapon in future conflicts. Because they were unmanned and could be used for far less money than other technology, ballistic missiles were appealing. For years, there was a heated dispute about the project that was ordered in GUR 339, with members of the Royal Air Force strongly supporting it. The Ministry of Supplies requirement for multi-company offers four months before to the submission date, and the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force's internal disputes over different technology hindered the request for an aircraft. A low altitude over water subsonic attack plane, the Blackburn Buccaneer, was the result of the NA-39 project, which engaged the Royal Navy. If the Royal Air Force backed down from its own proposal, the Royal Navy promised to meet some of the specifications of GUR-339 with its NA-39 project. The Royal Air Force pretended to be uninterested in the TSR-2 project because former First Sea Lord Mountbatten was a staunch advocate of the Buccaneer. When the plan was approved in a contract that the Conservative Party approved, the political climate deteriorated. The Labour Party, known for dragging ambitious aircraft developments through the mud, used the project as a rhetorical tool to criticize spending. Complicating matters was the Conservative Party's support for the initiative. The P-17A proposal from English Electric and the Sword Brothers, as well as the Type 571 from the Vickers-Armstrong merger, were among the alternatives that the Air Ministry took into consideration. Thanks to its well-designed avionics, support facilities, and logistics, the Vickers-Armstrong application was deemed more remarkable. P-17A was seen as promising, but not as much. Vickers-Armstrong's was awarded the contract, and English Electric was included as a subcontractor. Operational Requirements 343 gave the project authorization on January 1, 1959, and it was dubbed TSR-2, or Tactical Strike or Reconnaissance Mach 2. It was anticipated that the aircraft will fly as low as 200 feet or less and attain Mach 2 at an altitude. Vicar Armstrong provided a superior fuselage design, while English Electric suggested a delta wing design. With English Electric creating the back half and Vicar Armstrong building the front, the project evolved into a well-coordinated Frankenstein. The British Aircraft Corporation was awarded the 1960 contract, and they utilized two turbojets that were reheated from Bristol Siddeley Olympus, sustaining Mach 2.05 at 37,000 feet and 51,000 feet. The aircraft was built with advanced avionics, which added to its exorbitant cost. 
A very sophisticated autopilot system that would eventually be used in aviation was being developed as part of this research. Strict production requirements meant that prototype work was avoided, which hindered progress with the initial development batch of nine airframes serving as a line of prototypes. The first prototypes were completed four years after the project started. They had partial emissions and were not the same as the planned future production model. Long-distance flights were made possible by the autopilot system, which was regarded as one of the most sophisticated of its type. Originally, the British planned to strike NATO locations using the TSR-2, carrying their tactical nuclear weapon, the Redbeard. Operational requirements 1177 resulted from the Redbeard's inability to be carried externally at supersonic speed. A small tactical nuclear weapon that could be upgraded to boost output was added to the requirement in 1962. It was discovered that the TSR-2 was equipped with two WE-177A bombs beneath its wings and two within the fuselage. The smaller Web-177 would not carry Redbeard bombs, thus Bombay had to be modified for it. Testing for the TSR-2 test flight was delayed for three months due to a logistical problem, and the project was difficult due to an engine explosion in February 1964. Due to problems with the engine and landing gear, pre-flight testing started slowly. A low-pressure turbine shaft malfunctioned as a result of another engine blowing up during testing. The administration insisted on conducting the first comprehensive test flight prior to the 1964 election in spite of these obstacles. The flight was being conducted by test pilot Roland Piedmont, who was aware that the engines may blow. Given the serious problem of engine explosions, the maiden flight was perceived more as a political statement than as a properly executed technical program. The successful flight occurred at Wiltshire's Aircraft and Armament Experimental Unit on September 27, 1964. But after takeoff, the landing gear failed to retract, an issue that remained until the 14th test. The aircraft operated in unfinished and basic form after 24 test flights, which some pilots thought was excellent. Significant electronic parts were missing, and the aircraft was not performing up to GUR 343 standards. Requirements were lowered to attain a battle radius of 650 nautical miles, a maximum speed of Mach 1.75, and a takeoff run of 3,000 feet instead of 1,800 feet in order to save money and continue the project. When the U.S. began developing the F-111 Aardvark as a strategic nuclear bomber in the early 1960s, several British engineers contended that the TSR-2 would have been a better aircraft. A public strike resulted from the British Aircraft Corporation considering the American swing wing as a substitute. Probable cost overruns forced the Labour government to reject the American plane, resulting in the TSR-2's cancellation on April 1, 1965. The Labor Administration, in spite of protestations, considered buying F-111s instead, and the TSR-2's finished sections were discarded in less than six months. There are rumors that the British were coerced by the US to end the program. An important development in the UK's imperial fall was the cancellation of the TSR-2, which had an impact on budgets, defense priorities, and all facets of British administration. The United Kingdom could no longer afford a highly developed military with a worldwide presence. Though it was too specialized for use in future mission scenarios, the TSR-2 was thought to be the greatest possible aircraft for tactical nuclear attacks. Following the cancellation, Britain renounced its ambitions to purchase the US F-111 because the price had risen over the budget of the TSR-2. Since the UK didn't need an aircraft that could meet TSR-2 standards, it worked with Germany and Italy to build the Panavia Tornado in 1980. The United Kingdom's military and its capacity to carry out tactical nuclear attacks suffered a serious blow with the cancellation of the TSR-2. So what do you think? 
If produced, would it have been a better aircraft than the F-111 Aardvark? Share your thoughts in the comments. For more such videos, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.